Hey everybody, Billy Porter here. And this is my message to America. Malcolm Gladwell's debut book, The Tipping Point. How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference, first published in 2000, defines a tipping point as the moment of critical mass, the threshold, the boiling point. The book seeks to explain and describe the mysterious sociological changes that mark everyday life. As Gladwell states, ideas and products and messages and behaviors spread like viruses do. And epidemics are sensitive to the conditions and circumstances of the times and places in which they occur. So with that said, there's no doubt in my mind that we as a nation are at a tipping point the tipping point, one that has been heating towards boiling over for hundreds of years. Our basic human rights, our black bodies have been used as pawns for political gain since the beginning. So just a little history lesson for everybody, just so we're clear. Number one, Christopher Columbus did not discover America. The motherfucker sailed over here on Miss Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria and stole this land from the indigenous people who were already here through violence, disease, and genocide. Number two, this country as it stands right now was built on the backs of my ancestors who were in fact stolen by force from their homeland and forced into slavery. Slavery that is the foundation of America. This country was built on thievery, violence, genocide, and slavery, period. So I find it disingenuous when my well-meaning white liberal allies, news outlets, politicians, faith leaders, and all the rest of my Caucasian compatriots act as if this shit is new. Ain't none of it new. You know it and you all benefit from this ancient privilege simply by being white. This is why nothing has changed. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Things have changed, but nothing has changed for good. So please, please keep your white, I didn't do it, fragility to yourselves and simply Listen, finally, listen to us. I want to share a little story with you about what it means to be a black man in America. So uh, my husband and I have rented a house out on Long Island. Some friends of mine asked for us to meet them at a farm, a hog farm. We arrive in my BMW to the farm, sprawling lands. There's a, a, a structure at the beginning of this farm that's sort of open, no real doors, but a lot of stuff is stacked in it. To me, I don't see parking. I don't see people. I don't know what's going on. My anxiety starts to rise. A little girl comes out of the barn, runs out, sees my black ass with my white husband in a BMW sitting on her property, which to me feels like it might be private, but I don't know. This little girl runs back in to the barn. My panic and anxiety rises so high to the point where I actually have to leave the public farm for fear that Pap Pap is gonna come out with his shotgun. This is what we as black people deal with every day. Every single day, I tell this story to illuminate a tragic reality that is all too real for black Americans every single solitary day of our lives. 
And just to go even deeper, and black people hear me, because y'all ain't gonna like this one. As a black queer man in America, my basic human rights have been up for legislation every single day that I have had breath in my body from all sides. And by that, I mean that the black community's relationship with the LGBTQ plus community is appalling at best and eerily similar to that of white supremacists versus black folk. Hear me, black people, and hear me well. I'm calling y'all out right here and right now. You cannot expect our demands of equality to be met with any real legislative policy and change when y'all turn around and inflict the same kind of hate and oppression on us. The tragic reality here is that black trans as well as gender non-conforming women and men are being killed in the United States by cis black men to such a degree that it is nearly the worst emergency for trans women on the planet. The murders of black trans women by black men since 2016 have helped drive the most violent period for LGBT, LGBTQ plus people on record. Just this past week, during the riots, during the peaceful protests, Ayanna Dior was brutally beaten by a gang of black men while trying to peacefully protest for our rights. LGBTQ plus black folks are black people too. Our lives matter too. So this is my response to those of y'all who don't understand that. Fuck you. And yes, I am cussing. It's time for cussing. Y'all, this conversation is not about tolerance. This conversation is not about acceptance. It's about a demand for the respect for our humanity. Like we respect everybody else's. Because none of us are free till we all are free. So to my homophobic and transphobic brothers and sisters, get your fucking houses in order. but I digress. As black people, we risk our lives every time we leave our homes. As queer people of color, that risk is doubled. We move, we move about our days, sucking it up, hiding our pain and terror from the world, trying to make ourselves small so white people and straight people feel comfortable. Our parents try to prepare us for the realities of this world. The fact that the playing field is not level. The laws that protect white people do not do the same for us. And that we have to be at least 10 times better at anything we choose to do at life. To simply get in the rooms where things happen. We had a black president. We thought we won something. We were eight years in power. Or so we thought. I don't know if we got bored, we got complacent, I don't know. But for hundreds of years, generations after generations, we have fought. Our ancestors have fought for us. Our families fought and marched and boycotted peacefully for the right to walk around this earth like we have the right to be here. Because we do. It enrages me that after nearly 400 years of the same hate, the same oppression, the same inequities, we, the black people, have to continue to be forced to educate our white allies as to what white privilege is and how they benefit from this destructive, imbalanced, systematic, American race race-based infrastructure. Please understand that what's going on in this country right now is not new. 
and white folks are mad, mad that they had to follow orders from a black man for eight years. That was never supposed to happen. So trust and believe the chaos and bloodshed that we are witnessing is now in direct response to the world where a man like President Obama could rise to the highest office in the land. This administration has clint a, this administration has sent a clear message. No more niggas in the White House. Yeah, I said it. The subjugation and oppression of black people has always been the plan because when there is chaos, the government may implement law and order pretending to swoop in and be the savior of the shit they started in the first place. This administration's response or lack thereof to this pandemic is nothing short of genocide. And for those of you who may not know the definition of genocide, let me break it down for you. Genocide, the deliberate and systematic extermination of a national racial, political, or cultural group. So here we are, America, at the tipping point. And we have some tough decisions to make come November. And yes, I am politicizing this moment. It is political. It's always, for us, political. For if it's not political, what is it? I do not condone violence in any form. I do not condone anarchist culture that uses our trauma for their material gain. But as we see the horrendous truths unfold before our very eyes, whether in the form of a liberal, I'm not a racist white woman who because she didn't like being reminded by a black man of the law that she was breaking in Central Park immediately wielded her white woman privilege by calling 911 and lying, saying a black man was threatening her life. Or in the form of a police officer with his knee on the neck of George Floyd for eight plus minutes, nonchalant, being filmed from multiple angles, hands in pockets, with three other officers co-signed on this cold-blooded, premeditated murder. It's murder. Whether it's these specific violations or the buildup of centuries of unchecked, institutionalized racist oppression, the result is what we see before us. The American democratic experiment is failing. We are not, nor have we ever been better than this. We have tried. Progress has been made. But as we can see, centuries of progress can be rolled back and snuffed out by white men who fear they are losing their power. And when white men get scared, wars happen. Let me say that again. When white men fear losing their power, they will stop at nothing to keep it, including blowing up the entire world. And with 40 million people on unemployment and over 100,000 dead from a plague and civil unrest in the streets of America that has reached, has reached the tipping point, I ask you this one simple question. Are you better off than you were before? Y'all remember that question from the Reagan years? Are you better off 
than you were before. So, we have two clear choices in November. Vote this motherfucker and all his cronies out of office, reset, and begin the American Democratic experiment again at zero or not. In November, this election is the most important that we've ever seen in our lifetime. Democracy is on the ballot. White supremacy is on the ballot. Homophobia, women's rights, trans rights, Muslim rights, all human rights, all on the ballot this November. And I ask you, America, will we be better than this? I guess we'll know the answer come November. It's time for change. And this time, change for good. Vote, 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 vote. God bless you all. And God bless these United States of America.